you wondering how to compete with discount brokerages or tender style realty models? Well, join us today. We're going to have special guest John Selby with Compass Real Estate in San Diego. And we're going to tackle these issues of how to differentiate yourself and demonstrate value so you can serve the customers like you really need to. Just a second. All right, John. How are hey, you? Hey, Ryan. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. So I am here with John Selby from uh, the Selby team at Compass Real Estate in San Diego. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Sure are. <laughs> yeah, John is in a, a community with me, so we, we uh, uh, associate a lot together and kind of trade secrets and um, you know, talk about these issues in depth at, at conferences and whatnot. I thought you'd be a great person to have on uh, this broadcast because you deal with, you know, kind of a higher end uh, clientele, wouldn't you say? Uh, compared to other parts of the country, yeah, we do. We tend to have a higher price point here um, in San Diego, which, you know, leads us to it's considered a higher end, absolutely. Yeah. Right, right. And in and, Compass and in general, you know, you guys are full service, right? As as are, are we. I'm a boutique, obviously. But, you know, uh, I thought that, you know, when you look at the different models, there's a lot of these disruptors entering our industry. And the way I look at it is that I see the market share is going to be taken on the lower end, right? Because you know, full service is always going to have its place on the higher end. And in reality, it shouldn't really take any service, any, any of our uh, market share at all. It's just you're going to have some uneducated sellers out there, uneducated buyers. They really don't know what they're getting, you know, and that's right. why I named this these Tinder style apps, because, you right. know, it, it looks really cool. But are is that really serving the customer? So, um, you yeah. know. Yeah, the first thing I had to talk about, well, before we get into the Tinder style one, there's a there's a sure. big company out there, national company. I'm not going to say their name, but they offer size these 1% listings. Um, and you and I were talking before we broadcast. You, you share your story about you have a, a client that you're working with and what, what they had happened with them. Yeah, yeah. So I, I currently have a client that they're a buyer client of mine and they sold their house using uh, said, said brokerage. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and they just, you know, it sold, everything was, you know, everything closed. Um, but they, after the fact, you know, six months later, went to go look for a full service brokerage, full service agent to work for them because they were just, you know, dissatisfied with sorts of aspects of it, feeling like they never um, were in touch with the same person on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of had to get everybody up to speed every time they had a conversation with, you um, with them, you know, they were talking to a new person all the time. So they just didn't feel like the hands-on experience was there for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, from when they bought their house with a full service brokerage to going to a discount and now looking for a full service again, they really realized the benefits that they were getting mm -hmm. um, by using somebody who really is full service and who is really hands-on there for them. Yeah. And, I, and, and what's interesting about this particular model, and they're, they're everywhere, they're nationwide, mm -hmm. right? They're salaried agents, right? So sure. what I this to is the same kind of service that people get when they go to Bank of America versus mm -hmm. the local top producing uh, mortgage lender, right? Right. And, and Absolutely. You, know, you kind of get shuffled to the side. The person that takes your, your loan isn't going to be. And then, now this is not exclusive. I'm sure these companies have great people there, but they're sure. the exception rather than the norm, right? And right. The reason I know this is if you if you Google this company or, or go to uh, Yelp, the reviews just aren't there, right? And what's happened with us, um, we had a listing and, you know, we've had several listings where we had multiple offers. That they very, I don't know if they've ever won a multiple offer on one of my listings, just because if you look at the way that they structure the contract, mm -hmm. it's just not there. Now, I will tell you this, I've worked with a fantastic agent or two in their, in the past before, not on a multiple offer situation, but on just a regular situation. But guess what? Those guys don't stay there, you know? Right. So they're going to well, go. They get, yeah. They go there to get started. I, I've heard a lot of agents. I've talked to a lot of really good agents there. And they go there and they're like, well, I just, you know, I didn't know where to go. I had no experience. I was getting, you know, guaranteed income. I'm too nervous to go into like a full commission based mm -hmm. um, brokerage. So I went there. 
Um, but I'm only going to be there for a year or two years and, and then I'm going to leave. And my question always back to them is, well, everything that you've built for the past two years or however many years you're there, you don't get to take any of that with you. It doesn't belong to you whatsoever. So you're, yes, you've got a knowledge and, and transactional base experience, but do you have a database anymore? Do you have anything that's, you know, anything that you would have if you had spent two years, you know, building your own business out. Yeah, and I, and I get that. You made a good point. A lot of these agents will go there because they do get that salary. They do get to start out. And it's really hard to start out as a new agent. But, you know, getting back to, like, how to differentiate yourself. Like, let's talk about seller, like working for a seller. Sure. What are your, yeah. how do you differentiate yourself to a seller if you're going up against these people or just anyone at all, you know? Yeah, you know, for, for us, our... Our serve our our differentiation is our service. We're very very hands on. We hire you know we have uh, full time assistants that allow us to then be present for our clients. You know we don't take a listing and then hand you off to a listing specialist or hand you off to uh, you know an assistant or, or another person. It's it's really we're, we've created a structure where we are actually able to be there in the forefront for you. Who's learning their property the best? We're going to know it besides them. Yeah. You know, who's going to answer calls and screen, you know, screen listing or buyers agents and buyers. We are, you know, if there's difficult questions to answer and all that, we're, we're there to, to really um, answer those questions. So that's a big, you know, differential. Um, you're, you're just going to get a ha more hands-on experience with us as opposed to a new person contacting you every step of the way, you know, we're yeah. your guide, you, you're, we're your guide through the sale or the purchase. Yeah. And, and not just that with the sale, like I, I say, you know, we've got um, our services, which are, you know, uh, staging services, the marketing. You and I are in a very, you know, exclusive group of, of agents that subscribe to a lot of, you know, pretty deep principles of marketing. And, right. you know, I don't I would put myself up against anybody in this town in terms of how we're marketing property and the exposure we get out. And I know you're doing the same thing, right? Totally. We're, we get on our listings. We get people coming in just saying, I don't I don't even know where I how I found out about your listing. I just knew I had to come check it out because I knew it was in my neighborhood yeah. and it looked really awesome. You know, and what goes to that is we take professional photos, whether it's a hundred thousand dollar listing or a $10 million listing, you're, it's the same photographer that comes to both properties. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and I don't mean that to say that the, the $10 million listing is getting a crappy photographer. I'm saying that the hundred thousand dollar listing is getting the $10 million listing exactly. photographer, it's you know, and that's quality, just the way right? it is. Yeah. 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 And and so I think, you know, when we're talking about discount brokerages, you know, that that's that, those are services we do for, for sellers. We do um, internet marketing, we do professional photos, we do staging. Um, and you know, like you said, taking the, the assistant, having that concierge type service where we've got somebody on the front end and I've got, you know, one to two to three people on the back end you know, handling things behind the scenes that they don't even see. So I tell you just one more, one more little segment about that company is that I had a listing that uh, we got an offer from, we got like uh, two offers, just two offers. And, you know, they, they lost out. My agent was doing an open house at that listing and they, she met those people and she followed up, call, called them. And they said, this is the sixth home that we have lost out on because of we don't even know why. And she's like, well, I know why the offer wasn't, wasn't very aggressive, you know? Right. And it's easy to write an aggressive offer and still uh, allow the due diligence. You just gotta be smart about it. Of course, it, of you know? course. And a couple notes on, on that front. Um, I've been in escrow before and the, the agent met the client at the home inspection for the first mm -hmm. time or, they, or a new agent was meeting them at the home inspection. I find that that's one of the most critical points uh, you know, for, for a sale is, is the home inspection. And if you've got some agent who's never even met the client before standing there while they're finding out all the terrible things, terrible things, you know, right. about the house, they, and, and they have no experience to say, you know, to talk them through these kind of scenarios, you see a deal blow up in like 35 seconds, you know, and Absolutely. sure enough, that buyer didn't go forward with that sale. And we went in, you know, we went back on the market because it was a, and, and, and kept going. So, and another instance too, we actually, we have a couple of listings that are show, you know, we have to accompany the showing. And so we get calls um, to, to show it by them. And we actually had one of the showing agents leave midway through the showing, just said, oh, I've got to go to something else. Do you mind just taking over and just left? Oh, wow. On a $2 million, a $2 million listing of ours. And they just bounced. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. So, well, interesting. 
point, we do the same thing. If I like, I'll, I'll work with investors pretty regularly, and I had an investor we're looking at a duplex, and I don't want them to get that inspection report without having to walk through with the inspector, right? right. Because most of the time, that the the words on this paper are going to be a lot scarier than what's actually whatever the problem is. So, right. you know, I've had remote investors like, ah, oh, you know, just send me the report after. It's like, no, no, no. I want we'll do FaceTime at the property mm -hmm. to walk right. through the issues because if you get them on paper, you know, inspection. You know, they say people some things look good on paper. Inspections look bad on paper, right? Terrible. So they always yeah, do. The inspectors got to cover themselves. <laughs> they do have to cover themselves, but they'll also, if you have a good inspector. They, they write what they have to write as they're they're supposed to, and they have to, but they'll also give you like a gauge of like one to 10, like this is a three problem or a 10 problem, right. you know? And I think that's that's, mm -hmm. that's part of the service thing. So let's move on to iBuyers, right? So have iBuyers hit San Diego yet? A lot, to be honest with you. There's a lot of talk of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just haven't seen a lot. I mean, at our price point, it almost doesn't make sense to an extent. Yeah. Um, because our average single family house is selling in the, you know, 550, 600,000 range. Right. Um, you know, and even a fixer upper, for example, still is selling at that price point. So yeah. it's, um, so I haven't seen a whole lot. I haven't gone up against someone saying, oh, well, I'm just going to sell it easily through an, you know, through an iBuyer program or whatever. Yeah. So for us, they have, they just started and I've got, I had these clients okay. that like um, looking at it, listing this $220,000 property and um, it's kind of like, you know, that's kind of on the outskirts of Austin. I don't normally take this for the referral from a good friend. So I was, you know, was talking with them and they said that they got an, an, uh, one of these offers. I, I don't think they even spoke to someone at 220000 And I think the house might be worth, you know, 240 to 250 um, okay. and it's, it's a 10% service fee. So you and I are talking about before yeah. the break is like our commission is six, you know, around 6%, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. you know, it varies from, from market to market, but that's kind of where it's at. It hovers around there. Right. Why would you pay 10% on, you know, of a service fee? It doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah. I think it has to do with like, <sighs> My guess is it's just it's like a it's like a new it's a new shiny object for people yeah and and so that's part of it and they don't it, it's the same thing when you buy like uh, tickets for a, for a concert you know the ticket price is one hundred fifty dollars but they're charging you one hundred fifty dollars in service fees also so the reality of it is the ticket price is more money <laughs> you know yeah. really it's double the price and, and you made a good point uh, is that you know if, if if your if your motivation for that is to get the home sold quickly. You can just do that by price, and we're still going to be cheaper. You know, I mean, you, 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 you yeah. before, um, you know, you we, you'll get right. photos, and yeah. you, know, you put that property. If if we put that on for two hundred twenty thousand dollars with good photos and a, a good little push at marketing, what do you think would happen on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar property? Multiple offers guaranteed, especially if it's yeah, if it's worth two fifty and you're listing at two twenty, yeah. you're going to get multiple offers. You know. Um, it's inevitable. That's that's a that's just it's inevitable. And you're gonna you're gonna you as the seller, you're gonna be able to pick the the buyer, or you're gonna at least be able to pick the most certain buyer, which is gonna put you in almost the same exact situation as you would be in with this iBuyer program. You know, yes, it's a guaranteed sale, but at certain prices, we can pretty much guarantee a sale at the same the same way. Right. And then so this is what I'm talking about. Like this is what this broadcast is about. Like if you're watching this and you're a real estate agent, by the way, oh geez, I forgot. If you're watching this, you have to put this in the comments. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to subscribe to future broadcasts, type the word "agent" and you will be subscribed to our Facebook lives that we're coming coming forward. But if you are watching this and you're a real estate agent, like you know, rewatch it because you're going to come against these uh, discount brokerages, these i buyers, and it's really not that hard. To differentiate yourself, right? You know, you offer uh, concierge type service, um, professional photos, marketing over and above just putting something on the MLS. And if they need a quick sale, we can drop the price at a very aggressive price that will a get it sold and more likely get multiple offers, right? So Definitely. I think 
easy if you're armed and you're going to the appointment to know how to differentiate yourself. You just really need to be armed about that, right? Um, yeah, you've got to be prepared, especially with examples. I can, you know, tell, I can give examples over and over again in our market where, um, you know, discount broker or an iBuyer type of situation, they're they're hands down getting less money for the house than we're getting. Yeah. Um, you know, you know when you look at the when you look at it. Yeah. So talk, talk about this, and, and you know, for for real estate agents that are watching this, and that's what this audience is mainly about. Have you ever had a situation where you've turned down someone that they're not going to be the cow? They're not. They're not going to either appreciate the caliber of your service. Like one of the the I don't know the uh, the three points that we're putting in here, or like when to, when when is it time to say no? Have you had any experiences like that to a seller or yeah. buyer? We've definitely on the buy side, I've definitely had some and that side it's, it's, it's usually comes down to personality or trust factor. If I'm feeling like a buyer is just not going to trust anything that I say, cause they always know better than what, yeah. you know, than me. Uh, I find that that situation, I just can't help that person, you know, right. and it's not because I think I'm right about everything, but the reality of it is, is I'm selling 30, 40 homes a year. They're buying one every 10 years. Yeah. Like I think I know a little bit about the process. So that's, that's that side. And on the selling side, you know, it, it's going to come down to, again, it always is going to, me, it always comes down to trust. And, yeah. um, and, and, and so if, if somebody's, you know, people interview multiple agents, that's a given, but if you're interviewing four five, six, seven, or eight agents at that point, it's like, pick somebody, um, you know, they're <laughs> the reality. And, and, and then if you're also, um, just, continuing to question the the marketing tactics or I don't need that marketing or I don't want that or I don't want this or I don't want to pay for that mm -hmm. because so and so will do it for less money you know it gets to a point where you're just like beating your head against the wall trying to convince them that you're the right choice yeah and it's probably better off to just walk away because you need to go spend more time focusing on people that actually want to work with you that's right and I've had I've probably had at least a dozen maybe two dozen instances where I've had people that are comparing you know me to another agent and they're like, well, such and such will mm -hmm. do the list side of the 1%. I'm like, look, go for it then. Right. I mean, if you want yeah. to get a quality broker, they're not going to do it for 1%. And my given line, no. they can't even hold to their own commission. Then how are they going to negotiate for you? You know? And, and I can Definitely. tell you, I had several of these where they come back and said, I wish I would have hired you. Um, and then getting yep. up to what you said, I recently had just a few weeks ago, I had a, uh, picked up a listing and it was on the market with another pretty top producing agent for 21 days. And, uh, boy, this lady was something else. I mean, we staged her home and moved out to California, the client, she had moved out to California and, 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 and she found me on Yelp and she has written 60 Yelp reviews that are really mind my what I'm saying to her, but what, what, what I found out was she was very, very difficult. And like we, mm -hmm. she had left all her stuff there, moved to California. She thought she was a designer. My wife like depersonalized, decluttered that really offended her, even though we told her we were going to do that. And it just came one thing after another. And the final straw was like, she was like, well, you know, look, we, we, you need to have the house clean because she was okay with that. She's like, yeah, but you guys really need to go there and wait there with, uh, the cleaner for two hours while I clean. And I'm like, that's not what we do. You know, I'm not, uh -huh. a I've got cleaners that you can trust or you can hire a friend or family member or not hire, but get one to go there. So, um, yeah. So, all right. Uh, tell everyone where they can find you at. Yeah. Yeah. You can find us on Facebook at slash the Selby team. Mm -hmm. or Instagram at selbysellsandiego.com or our website, www.selbysellsandiego.com. We're here always, really, you know, in San Diego doing doing our thing. <laughs> yeah, and Kelly's going to put that into the chat right here. Um, one of awesome. The, yeah, so one of the biggest sources of income for me are referrals for agents around the country. And so if you're it's watching it. this, you really need to like really make these contacts. And, you know, John is a fantastic agent in San Diego. So if you, if you have any uh, clients that are selling in San Diego or moving to San Diego, I would highly recommend you to hire his team. He's top notch. Um, 
That's it for today. We're going to keep it short and sweet. I don't, I don't have anything planned for next week. We'll be back in January with something else. I haven't figured that out yet. But uh, um, Merry Christmas, Sean, and thank you so much for being Same on the show.